Good morning, everybody. I'm working a slightly modified version of a recent SMO open uh, problem where the, the question in that particular contest was to count the number of n such that this condition could occur where it's a perfect square. And y'all, I'm just rewriting it. Perfect square means this m squared where m is some integer. I want to find a concrete n and p that satisfies this, which varies a little bit from the original problem, which was to count the number of n that would happen for a fixed prime. Now let's move along, y'all. I'm going to try to minimize the commentary because I've written down most of the stuff here. Uh, our original expression is almost uh, in the form let me write it right underneath here, uh, a squared uh, minus 2ab. And what we've done, is we've rewritten it to where it is in this useful form. You know, a minus b quantity squared is equal to this. Okay? And notice here, I, I did highlight this, the original problem is very close. If you if you multiply this out and rewrite it like this, it's close to being in this form, but it's not quite. So you have a plus here. Now when you do this modification here, when you notice this, and this is the hardest part in my opinion, when you notice that this trinomial is in the form a minus b quantity squared, then you can kind of go to town with this. Now the rest of this, uh, what, what we do, this is an important adder right here to get our original expression in this form, a minus b quantity squared, okay? Now, of course, right here, this is just a silly question. It's because it is a square, okay? I just wrote it up here for you, but we can rewrite everything like this, and this is in a workable form now because we can actually count. We can not only count, but we can find concrete instances of n and p, okay? So, uh, hopefully all of this is straightforward enough. I, anything I say, We'll probably just make it more confusing, but we do have this written. We have our original expression more or less in terms of something of the form a squared minus b squared, right? Right here. Okay, and let's uh, let's keep moving. Um, now, uh, the reason why this is helpful is because we can this this. This clump of numbers over here that we just kind of do into the mix to make it be in the appropriate form, actually, you can rewrite this, and it's not super clear why this is helpful until you actually see the result here, but you can rewrite this as 2p uh, times 11. Okay, 2p times 11 times 2 times 13. Okay? Now, the reason why that's helpful is because we have the difference of two squares going on right here, right? You see, this is plus m minus m, so it is in the form difference of two squares, and that means we can equate each of these individual factors, which is what I've done here, okay? Now, here it's useful that, that p is bigger then the primes 11 and 13, or, or the factorization, would not work out, okay? That, that's where we actually appeal to the fact that P, let me write that down, P is strictly greater than uh, the primes 11 and 13, which just happened to be the, uh, 11 times 13 is 143, as you, I'm sure you noticed, okay? So that's important as far as being able to write down these two statements, okay? Now, so... Um, Notice what we do right here. We I, I just I just got everything together. This statement right here is equivalent to the statement underneath it, like, collecting like terms. This statement right here is a, is the same as equivalent to the statement underneath it. Now, if we sum, notice how if we sum these two statements, I'll, I'll just write summing. If I'll just write sum, okay, okay. If we sum these two statements, the m's eliminate, right? You see how these m's eliminate. Okay, this is neat. This is pretty cool how this works out. So the M's eliminate, and then after you do some arithmetic right here, you get this statement right here. Now what I did is I just arbitrarily picked P equals 151 just for the sake of concreteness. This was different from the SMO problem. They just wanted to count the number of solutions. Here I want to produce a concrete solution. Now 151 is prime. You can verify that. It doesn't have any prime divisors less, uh, less than 11, I think, the square root of 151. 
But anyway, when you substitute the 151 in, you actually get N is equal to 1968. Okay, so that would be the N corresponding to the P, and, and, and this would be the P that would make the result a perfect square. Now, uh, I, went, I went ahead and did the arithmetic down here for you guys, but you can see the 1968 minus the 151 squared ends up being a number squared, just like the original problem was intended to do. So we actually produced a concrete N. I'll write it here and I'll write it back at the top. N is equal to 1968. And P again was arbitrarily chosen to be 151 because it's the next prime bigger than 143, I think. Uh, maybe there's some others, but all you need is one, okay? And so notice, folks, this would work for any prime number. 151 was just for the sake of concreteness. Any prime greater than 143. And, and 143, 143 is not a prime, but any prime greater than 143 uh, would, would meet, would, would, the same kind of thing would happen. You'd have a different constant right here, but the same kind of thing would happen. The whole thing would end up being a, a perfect square. Okay, so let's let's come back up to the top and just finish, uh, just write down the answer. Uh, so, find an n, uh, n equals to 1968. And this is a bizarre question. I, I had to look at the hints in the problem, or the, the problem, I, 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 as usual, I couldn't work it directly. I had some ideas. But there's some sneaky algebra here, and it, that's why it's number 25, I guess. Uh, problem 25 up here is, I guess, among the harder problems on, on this on this test. But, okay, so that does it, folks. I uh, hope you liked it. I hope I wrote down enough to make it clear. And again, the algebra was a little sneaky, a little obscure. But again, I liked it a lot, and I hope you enjoyed it as uh, much as I did.